This episode is sponsored by Curiosity Stream, smart TV for your smart TV. This is a beaver. You've probably heard of their dam building, sorry, dam building and tree cutting. Jenny, what's wrong with this beaver? He's not even trying. Look at him, he's drunk. Oh, that's better. It's a baby beaver. They're very cute. However, aside from humans, no other living animal does more to modify its environment for its own purposes. Beavers like it wet, and they are very good at making things wet. But when? How does the beaver, and why does it beave? Here are true facts about the beaver. To understand the beaver, you should know that it is a rodent. Rodents are the furry little meatballs of the field and forest. Just the right size for a snack. Who among us has not wanted a beer butter a hamster at some point? Guilty. <laughs> Those flies are waiting for the cafeteria to open. So, being delicious, one thing that rodents became very good at is hiding. Old school beavers weren't into all this swimming and tree cutting business, but they could sure piss you off in a game of hide and seek. Look at this thing. When people first discovered it, they didn't know what it was. They called it the Devil's Corkscrew, because apparently the devil has big bottles of wine. Personally, I think Devil's Bicycle Seat or Devil's Catheter would have been more devil appropriate. You know what it is? It's the fossilized tunnel of Paleocaster, a beaver that lived 20 million years ago. See? Good at hiding. At some point, the ancestor of the modern beaver got into swimming. It's a good way to escape predators, especially if you're a clumsy waddling football of flesh. On land, the beaver isn't exactly graceful. But in the water, it is exactly graceful. Its paddle tail, which is more flexible than a cat's, becomes a rudder. They tuck their little hands up under their chin and let their big webbed feet do the swimmy. Underwater, a thin see-through membrane covers their eyes. Their nostrils close up and they have extra flesh on the inside of their lips that can close behind their front teeth. This allows them to carry things and even eat down there without getting a mouthful of water. It's just like my mother used to say, you try and find an open orifice on an underwater beaver. Good luck with that. The other thing that happened along the way was that beavers developed a taste for wood. Now, anyone can get a taste for wood, but to actually eat it is another matter. You need the right equipment, and rodent teeth are the right equipment. Let me explain. There are two main hard substances in a tooth, dentin and enamel. In our teeth, dentin helps anchor the tooth and enamel forms a little cap that sticks out of our gums. Enamel is incredibly hard, the hardest thing our body makes, shush now, and it protects our teeth from wear and tear and forms a chewing surface. Enamel is made from densely packed crystals of a mineral called hydroxyapatite. That's right, our teeth are made from something called apatite. That's like a dad joke time bomb. But you can't just fart a crystal out. It's a whole process. Special cells called ameloblasts crawl around and leave a little snail trail of proteins behind them. Crystals then grow on these proteins. See those little cross-hatched lines? Each one of those lines was created by a single ameloblast cell. Up close, enamel is like a woven tapestry of crystal. So when teeth grow in your mouth hole, dentin is formed and enamel is layered on top of it. But when they're done, the cells that make enamel self-destruct and disappear. And that's it. If you break your enamel, you can't grow any back. That's okay for us because we eat relatively soft things like delicious meats and cheeses. But other animals like horses have to really chew the shit out of their food. And they would wear through our little enamel nubbins in no time. The enamel in horse teeth is laid out in sort of tube-like shapes that run up the length of the tooth. These are long teeth that slowly emerge as the horse ages. Here you can see the teeth of a young, healthy horse. I mean, not that healthy, its flesh is missing, and it's been cut in half. But healthy before that. Anyway, here is an old horse, and you can see that the teeth are almost completely gone. This horse won't be able to eat much longer because it's lost its appetite. <laughs> ah, that's it. So what about rodent teeth? Well, we'll get to that after a brief message about our sponsor. Curiosity Stream has thousands of shows and movies about all sorts of topics. Nature, history, science, food, whatever tickles your knowledge bone. And it's only $14.99 for an entire year. I didn't know things could cost that little anymore. They charge you $14.99 just to look at gas prices these days. And gas stations don't have shows like The Great Penguin Rescue. There's a transition for you. It's a show about these penguins in South Africa that didn't get the memo that they should be living somewhere freezing. So instead, they hang out on beaches, which is crazy. 
Anyway, some of them need rescuing from time to time, and it turns out that it's not as easy as you might think. Sure, they can get a little bitey, but they're very cute. But if adorable penguins aren't your thing, there are 35 collections of curated programs hand-picked by experts. Check it out. Go to curiositystream.com slash zayfrank and use code zayfrank to sign up. Just $14.99 for the whole year. I'm a fan and happy to have them as a sponsor. Where were we? Oh, right. Rodents have some next-level toothage. Their front teeth never stop growing, and their enamel-producing cells don't self-destruct. These teeth don't have a root like ours do, but they start crazy far back in the head. These front teeth have two basic layers, dentin in the back and enamel in the front. But right on the front surface, there is a thin layer of enamel that has iron incorporated into it. This is what makes it orange, but it also makes it extra hard. And because of this, the front of the tooth wears down more slowly than the back. And you know what that means? Their teeth are essentially a self-sharpening chisel. Look at that right there. This one's sort of shaving strips of wood with his bottom teeth. Now, beavers only eat a very thin layer on the outside of the tree. That's the living tissue where the nutrients are. And they prefer smaller, tender branches and even leaves. But they go through the ones they can reach and that are close to the safety of water fairly quickly. To get to the higher branches, they couldn't be bothered to learn how to climb, like basically every other rodent. Beaver was all like, I don't go to branches, friggin' branches come to me. So when beavers cut down trees, they're not eating that part of the tree. They're just bringing the good stuff closer to the ground. Now to begin, beavers will usually make a deep cut on one side. It's like a game of chicken between a tree and a beaver head, to the death. If unsquished, the beaver will move to the other side to finish up. They listen carefully for any cracking sounds to make sure they can waddle away slowly to safety. Now there's a scientist that suggests that beavers can actually control the direction of the tree fall, planning the cuts so the trees fall toward the water where the beaver is safe. But it's not clear if this research was peer-reviewed. Jerry, that's a typo. It's peer-reviewed. No, I'm not saying the same thing. I'm saying peer, like someone in the same field. No, they're not peeing in a field, Jerry. No one's peeing. Just leave it. Once the tree is horizontal, the beaver will start cutting branches down to size and dragging them back to the water. There they will eat them or submerge them and store them for later. Remember, it's just a thin layer on the outside that they eat, so there's a lot of stick garbage left over and lying around. One idea is that beavers evolved a set of fairly simple instincts about what to do with all those dicks. One instinct that even baby beavers have is pile stuff on top of other stuff. And just that can have some perks. Here, look at this big bank with a beaver hole in it. Starts off as just a regular old tunnel in the dirt. Then they start piling sticks on the ground above. A little weird, but that's enough to prevent the ground from freezing where they sleep. And when the dirt roof of their little tunnel collapses, they've got a wood roof. But it's not just a pile of sticks. They have an instinct to fill in gaps and smooth things out. They bring in piles of mud with their little hands and pack it all in there. But they don't do this on the part that's furthest from the water, creating some airflow. Let's face it, beavers can get a bit musky. And they keep at it. If the water rises, they can build up higher. And pretty soon, they're not living in the dirt. They're living in a stick condominium. They can build these homes out in the middle of a pond, too. They don't build it around themselves like a bird's nest. Same basic rules. Build a pile, pack it in, and then tunnel into it and make yourself some rooms. It's cozy in there. I know what you're thinking. What is that beaver doing? Well, that beaver's eating chili right out the can, so to speak. You see, the problem with eating wood is that it's wood. It's not like a ding-dong with a creamy center. I mean, it's actually freaking wood. So to digest it, the beaver has to eat it twice. After the first go-round, I guess it still has some flavor. Like if you found some leftover chewing gum that had been in your ass. So not only do beavers have to chew the crap out of their food, they have to chew the food out of their crap. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Anyway, that's what they do and the end product is essentially sawdust. But that's not all that comes out the back of a beaver. They have anal glands, and I'm not talking about glands that get up tight when you're late for a party. I'm talking about glands in their anus that produce an oily substance that the beavers rub all over their body. It's like when you waterproof your shoes with a bit of oil, except this comes out of their butt. Those back paws there, by the way, have a special grooming claw on them. It has two nails on it, like a really cheap comb, but it helps get that butt oil all up in there. And that's not all. There's another tap on that backside soda fountain. They have castor sacs near the base of their tail, which produces castorium. It's a yellowish goo they use for scent marking. Beavers build these little piles around their territory. They climb up on them and they sort of fart out some castorium. Told you. 
You get a whiff of that, you know whose turf it is. It's also how females communicate that they are ready to mate. Apparently, castorium smells and tastes kind of sweet and leathery, and it's been used in perfumes and food. Someone was the first person to figure that out. Guys, check this out. The stuff that comes out of a beaver's ass tastes just like vanilla. Anyway, what beavers do inside their own home is their business. Oh my, <laughs> you could open a beer with that yawn. It's very cozy in there, but, sorry, it's very cozy in there, but if you live in a house that's half underwater, you're gonna have to deal with leaks. Beavers are very sensitive to the movement and sound of water where it's not supposed to be. And when they find a leak, they do it right. They go round to the outside to fix it. The sound of water also seems to be an important trigger for dam building. It's not the constant sound of rushing water, but rather the uneven burbling of water moving over an obstruction. Under the right conditions, when beavers hear this sort of sound, they seem to want to stop it. First, they'll put a pile of sticks right at the source of the sound. On the downstream side, they'll pin some larger branches as cross braces against the current. Then on the upstream side, they'll pack it in with finer materials. Sound familiar? So this mini dam is now on top of the source of the original sound. But the water goes around it and makes new pockets of sound. So the beaver beaves and the rest of the dam dam gets built. It's almost like you could think of dam building as the plugging of a very large leak. You know what some people do? They play water sounds through loudspeakers to try to trick beavers into building dams in specific places. Got some time on your hands if you're messing with beavers like that. These dams can flood massive areas. This extends the beaver's territory, but it also stabilizes the water level and creates a predictable environment. Most rodents don't really have these kinds of predictable environments, so they make lots of babies as a kind of insurance and they don't invest a lot in raising them. That often means high infant mortality. But beavers took matters into their own little creepy hands and evolved to control their environment. So they do it different. They form monogamous pairs, often for life, and they care for their babies for a couple of years. And this is important because the instincts in young beavers need to be refined by watching and learning from their parents. Their first attempts at dam building are pure crap, and their first lodges are like the first apartments that kids get after college. You know, there's a lava lamp, a futon, and a half-eaten bagel. And the futon's so gross you choose to sit on the bagel. And he's all like, where's my bagel? And you've got explaining to do. But over time, these young beavers will learn how to build incredible- Oh my gosh, did you see that? The big beaver took the stick and the little one headbutted him. Jerry, did you see it? He, he, it was a real headbutt. He used his head on his butt. Play it again, Jerry. No, don't fade it out. Oh, you're still mad about the peer review thing, aren't you? No, Jerry, I do understand what you heard. You heard peer, like one who pees, right? But Jerry, that's not a word. Queer isn't one who quees. It would need three E's in it, and P-er. What? Seer? Oh, that's interesting. Seer is sort of like what you're saying. But hold on, Jerry. The bigger point here is that you thought urination was somehow part of scientific review. What did you think peer review was? Well, Jerry, that's not science. That's niche pornography. Idiot.